I was born in England. Are we rolling? I'm British. Yes, sir. Soy Britannica. So how do you make a record? It's very simple, actually. There's a few simple steps. The first is you have to learn how to listen. And I'm not talking about listening in a concert hall to an orchestra or a chamber music group. You have to figure out how to assess and evaluate recorded music. So what does classical music, for instance, sound like coming over a pair of loudspeakers? And how do you do this? You start listening. You listen and listen and listen to a lot of different recordings. You get the best examples of these recordings. Absolutely. I recommend, for instance, if we're focusing on classical music, uh, Bartok Concerto for Orchestra, go out and find three different recordings of the same piece of music. Listen to them back to back and try to forget about the musical differences like tempo and whatever kind of shaping the conductor is doing and just listen for sound. Uh, so this, your spatial impression, frequency response, so whether it's bright or dark, dynamic range, whether there's big, a large contrast between soft and loud. Once you feel like you're pretty good at listening over loudspeakers, you need to assess your, uh, let's call it your control room or your listening environment wherever you're going to make this recording. So if it's in a studio, you need to play these same recordings that you're familiar with now, play them back in the control room over the loudspeakers, or if you're backstage at a concert hall, same thing. Get an idea of exactly what these recordings sound like in the environment that you're about to use for your recording. So once you've got this sort of mental image, um, uh, George calls it the mind's ear, uh, you can take that forward and you're ready to start opening up your microphones and listening to your live musicians on stage through that same playback uh, chain and you're ready to go. At that point, you should be able to make uh, really good decisions and evaluate the sound you're hearing and what you may need to do in terms of moving the microphones to optimize your, your capture. This leaves some things up in the air, the way you relate to musicians. If you hear something you perceive as being not quite what you were expecting, how you talk to musicians is incredibly important. That's a great point because part of it is adjusting the microphone positions, but also it's the interaction with the musicians and having them adjust how they're playing for the microphones. And having confidence in what you're doing in best, in best representing their performance. Absolutely. Yeah. Really important is when you sit down to record something, you're listening, you're interacting with musicians, but you walk out with a record. You're not gonna fix it later. You're not gonna fix it in Pro Tools. You're not gonna tune the flutes. You walk out with a record. And sometimes that takes a lot of performances and an idea of how to edit performances together. Editing is important. From the recording session, you have to walk out of there with the musicians knowing what the final result will sound like. Yeah. And you can't promise them, oh, well, don't worry, we'll fix all that later. They need to know at the time what the basic sound will be. Of course, you can refine balances throughout a piece, but the conductor, if it's orchestra, they need to, they need to know that their orchestra is properly blended and the balance is, is ex what they expect after the fact. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get the Richard look on the sides. I can't do the Richard look at the top because I've got a bald one, it's, spot. It's ask for number one on the side. I think they went shorter this last time. I'm like Sinatra, I'll I've only got like one take in me, yeah. Do you want to clap or anything? Applause? Oh, um, I'm new at this. <laughs>